Hello, Spider004 here. I received a few requests to do a tutorial for the landing gear, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I call these plates by how many squares they have, not what the real name is. The body is an 8x2x2 by two by two cuboid, the wing is an 8x4 thin, and the wheelbase is a 2x2 two two thin, and I use these little wheels on that plane. So. The system's pretty versatile. You don't have to use the same spacing I do, um, but I would recommend making one of these before experimenting so that you have a working example. All right, I'm going to take the center of the wing and attach it to the body so that the wing and the body they're uh, aligned the same on the edge here. And uh, the reason the my wings touch the edge of my body is because the engine sticks out further but for you it might be different just try and keep your spacing correct I'm going to take the center of this 2x2 two two plate and attach it one square over in the center and then for me as a general rule I stack her one prop down and I just toss that set my weight my general rule is to work with really heavy weights, but for here I'm just setting my weight as I go. So I did 50 for the base prop of the wheel, 100 for the body, 100 for the wings. It's just what I'm using for this example. A real plane would be different. And then you get your rope tool, rigid, whatever style you want, doesn't really matter. You go from the edge here to the edge here doesn't necessarily have to be the edge, but it is 50% of the base prop for the wheel over on the body. And then you go from here to here, and from here to here, from here to here. You may see, say, why do you use four ropes, or why don't you use some other constraint? Eh, I like ropes, and because it makes the X makes it so I can't really move side to side. And then we go from the edge on the top to the one square over edge on the wing from there to the other edge on the plate from the edge on the plate to the other edge on the wing from the other edge on the wing to the first edge on the plate. So now we have all of our rigid ropes done. It's so pretty. Now we switch to a non-rigid rope. And we go from the same distance as the plate. Like, from the center of this over, it's one square. From the center of this over, one square. It, it can be different, but for me, I like it because it looks good. To the edge of the plate, from the, er, from the center of the plate. And then from the center of the plate to the same distance over. Uh, one rope works just fine. I like the look of two ropes. Kind of have an OCD thing going. And then we need a wire hydraulic. You can use advanced hydraulics or normal hydraulics. It doesn't really matter. From the bottom. Just check in here. Two, one, two, three... One, two, three, over. Then we're going to set down our hydraulic. Um, it can be farther over, but the farther in you go, the less stable it's going to be. Now what this um, non-rigid rope does is this hydraulic is a pusher. It's not a puller. And uh, as this hydraulic pushes, it's eventually going to go past the um, area that this plate is straight. And you could say, why don't I just set it to the length that would make this plate straight? Because that's not very strong. If you make the hydraulic, say, 10 more length than what is required, and you put this rope here, it'll press against that rope and uh, be even stronger. It's the solution I found. It, it, it might work good for you, it might not, but generally it works good for me. So now I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and 
smart constraint, all this together. Alrighty. <laughs> now, I am... Actually, I should put on the wheel first. I use two tools to do this. Um, one is fading doors. Right here. What fading doors does is it will make a prop disappear. Quite easy to use. So I have my fading door applied. I'm going to use easy precision move. I'm going to go from the center to the center. And I have my nudge amount at 50% of prop width. Just kind of gets it in there pretty much even. And then I am going to use my axis center tool. You can use a normal axis right click, doesn't matter. Then I'm going to fade it, axis center, unfade it. It should be happy now. Now I'm going to wire my expression. Letting the cash load. This is my expression. Uh, the ones are the minimum. The sixties are the maximum. I got this expression with help from someone else, and it comes with instructions. I also put a constant and a damping in there. I use like a hundred thousand constant. It can be less, it can be more, but um, for this setup, it won't spaz out with high constants. Maybe if you go up to like two hundred thousand or something, but uh, generally it won't. So we are going to go wire advanced length to gear. Constant, constant, damping, damping. I will link the E2 code in the chat. Or I'll probably just paste it. And now we need a number pad input. And this is a non-toggle. You can set it to whatever you want. Wire advanced. Here input to number pad output. And, um... Oh, I forgot to no-clay. Uh, let me fade into the other, t the other wheel real quick. You can no-collide these to the wheels. You can no-collide all. No-colliding all. The reason I don't no-collide the wheels is because on my plane, it stops when it touches the wing. It stops it from jigging about. That should be it. We'll see. Me, I always make a dupe before I test something, because if you screw something up, then you've screwed up. Whereas if you make a dupe, then you just delete the dupe. So, usually it bugs out on the first try. Don't know why it does that, but it does. Yep, seems pretty landing gearish to me. Like I said, the spacing can be different. It's different on my plane, but... That is the general setup. If you didn't get any part of this, go ahead and tell me. And it should support its own weight. Yep. There you go. It's landing gear.